Captain John. The best part about Rocky Mountain National Park is the fact that it offers endless types of landscape opportunities of vista capacity to be able to see things and do things. I don't have the patience to do wildlife. They're, they're subjects that don't like to cooperate. So uh, <laughs> you spend an awful lot of time uh, in the cold and the dirt and the rain and, and trying to uh, get the shots that you really want. Landscape's a little bit more accommodating, though it does require an awful lot of work. The biggest issue course is dealing with all the people and sometimes that works out okay because you get people in your shots which sometimes you want but frequently you don't and when you work like I do trying to hit the good light right before and after sunset and sunrise uh, you don't usually run into a lot of people. I joined in the fall of 2016. I liked the gallery because I think it has a good location and uh, it has a good collection or a good cadre of artists. Standards have been set up pretty well there and you have opportunities to be viewed. They do as good a job I think as anybody in town can do given the issues that we have to deal with in this town. It's dedicated to artwork, it's not selling a bunch of other things. Uh, it's basically a good uh, cooperative gallery. Probably the most important aspect of that is that a print is much finer in detail than anything you're gonna see digitally. If you're buying something, see the print if you can. And so that's one of the reasons why you go to galleries to be able to do that. You know, And in fact, I've got an exhibit that's coming up uh, on April 29th. Ironically, this publication that deals with Rocky Mountain National Park, the, the exhibit itself is actually called Any Place But Here, okay, which yeah. is really trying to focus on a lot of things that I haven't exhibited over the years that were taken, excuse me, outside of Colorado. And the reason is because I'm exploring a lot of different environments to try to get a sense of light and subject in different places, mm -hmm. uh, different cultures, etc. So it's mostly U.S. domestic, uh, mostly states neighboring Colorado or elsewhere in the country. I do have shots from Israel as well. So it's architecture, it's landscape, it's street photography, you name it. I use pretty much exclusively Canon, not because uh, there aren't other good camera makers out there. That's simply what I started with and what felt good to me in my hand. And I think that that organic aspect of Picking a camera, it, it really needs to be a personal thing. You need to pick it up, you need to hold it, you need to uh, look through the, the viewfinder, you need to shoot, shoot, shoot a few shots and get a sense of which one feels better to you. So I carry a couple of different camera bodies uh, because you always need to have a backup in case one of them fails. Mm -hmm. And uh, I carry a number of different lenses as, as well and they range from a number of different things, but primarily it's an issue of um, focal length. I also, of course, use a tripod because if you're going to take any sort of special techniques like focus stacking or exposure stacking, you're going to have to have a camera that's absolutely still and not moving so you can duplicate the shot repeatedly. Uh, I mean, people tend to make a, an error with cameras of thinking that cameras record everything exactly as it is. And a lot of photographers say that they don't do any post-processing, etc., because they want it to look as natural as it is. The problem is the camera doesn't shoot naturally. Your eye is a much better tool of actually being able to adjust and see in both bright light and in minimal light in basically the same view. Your eye is able to make those adjustments very quickly because it has the brain to help sort out all that data and make the adjustments. So your brain basically makes all the post adjustments to the photographs that your eye is taking. With a camera, you have to sort of work around that. A camera has a difficult time generally being able to tell the difference between uh, a bright area and a dark area. It, it wants to choose which one it wants to focus on. Uh, and even though you can make adjustments with the camera settings and everything, you're usually running into a problem when you have a bright area versus a dark area in the same shot. One area tends to be favored over the other. So as a result, what a photographer will do, aside from making as many adjustments as they can on their camera to try to compensate for that, the best best way to actually be able to do it if you have the luxury is to put your camera on a tripod, keep your camera still, and take multiple exposures, usually three to five, of the same shot at different exposure levels. So that when you actually bring those photos together in a program like Photoshop, you're actually able to 
bring out the skies and the shadow areas of the same shot in different ways because you're using the good shadows from the uh, exposures that are exposing on shadow versus those that are exposing on sky and you're taking the good sky shots and you're putting them you're blending them all into the same shot and so the question i'm asking myself is is it, is it such a spectacular sunrise that it's worth getting the tripod out and taking my shots and the answer is yeah the first thing i look for is light because that's the the, the primary foundation for any photography that's done and the next thing right attached to that would probably be the weather because uh, in addition to the light weather also provides a great deal of drama depending upon what's going on i mean are we dealing with clear skies or are we dealing with a storm coming in or moving out and what exactly is it we're trying to relay in a message that comes out those two issues are the first things that come into to mind the next thing is it really depends upon if i'm actually shooting with some sort of deliberate intent of a subject matter that I want to try to capture, whether it's animals or whether it's hills and trees or whatever. Sometimes it's about pretty pictures. A lot of times it's about more social messaging, what's going on with climate, what's going on with the environment. So for example, if I'm working on fire season stuff, because we've had a, obviously a number of fires here in the area and I've been documenting a, a good deal of that, then I'll spend a great deal of time actually researching what it is I'm looking for and where it's going to be found. So when I do fire damage stuff, I'll actually find out where the fire damage is, where it's accessible, where I can get to it, and what it's going to offer as possible subject matter, whether I'm looking at burned out trees, uh, whether I'm looking at a vista of hundreds of thousands of trees, or whether I'm just shooting a single house that ended up getting burned in the process. Sure. Sometimes you go out and you just got a massive great vista in front of you with perfect light and you just shoot it. Mm -hmm. and that's when you, you say, yeah, that's when we're doing the pretty pictures. And that's the stuff that you know is going to go up in the gallery and it's going to be looked at by tourists and they want to remember their visit to Rocky Mountain National Park. And so they're going to buy one of my photographs just because it evokes a wonderful memory for them.